All right, have you done any lantern fly smashing lately? Yes. I mean, there are certainly plenty of opportunities. They're all over the place. I, I just want to break in here and say I was walking yesterday and they were buzzing all over the place and I heard some guy behind me goes, get him, get him, you know, because like we're all trying to smash him. It's something else. But anyway, the state says smash him so they don't harm vegetation, but a study by Penn State says they don't harm nearly as much as we thought. What? So new this morning, John Shumway here is to explain all this. What are you saying? You know, and they can't fly very well either. I mean, no. They cannot divert. If you're walking, they're going to... They're going to smack you right in the face. They certainly are a pest, and we've been led to believe that they can damage our gardens, all of our trees. Well, that Penn State study says actually they're very picky eaters. Have the pesky visitors found you yet? They certainly are out there, but it turns out they have a very specific appetite. Oh, there's only a few different hosts that it stays on for months and months, which is what it takes to really cause severe damage. A quick visit to your yard won't do it, but Penn State lead researcher Dr. Kelly Hoover says certain plants are definitely in the crosshairs. We already know that they can kill grapevines which has vineyards across western Pennsylvania worried and treating repeatedly because a single treatment doesn't keep them away. The other is Tree of Heaven, which is a invasive plant. So, Dr. Hoover says, no great loss. It's a nuisance killing a nuisance. But as for your trees that provide the shade in your yard? For the most part, they don't stay long enough to cause enough damage. So your well-established trees will be fine. It's the young saplings that could be harmed. Penn State learned all this with four years of controlled study where lanternflies were trapped with trees and couldn't move on, although they certainly wanted to. Under normal circumstances with your healthy grown trees, Dr. Hoover says, Even if you get a, a large infestation on your maples, they are only going to be around maybe a month. And Dr. Hoover says that is not enough time to really do long term damage. The tree will recover from whatever they wind up doing. Hmm. Should you spray them or not, John? Yeah, Dr. Hoover really surprised me with this. She says unless you're trying to protect grapes, OK, your vines right. or a young seedling tree, she says don't bother spraying. Eventually, they're going to move on. They'll travel up to seven to nine miles to find something else to eat, unless they hop a car, a train, or a truck, which sounds like a book or a movie. But <laughs> yes. that is exactly what they do. They <laughs> hop on moving vehicles. Oh, and if you want to smash them, she says, don't, you, you need to do it from the front, right? Look right into their beady little eyes and go for them. Because they can't jump backwards, they can only come forwards. So if they try to move, they're coming into your foot rather than jumping away from your foot. But they seem smart. Because they can <laughs> Do get they? well, they jump on vehicles because they're lazy to fly. Like he just said, <laughs> they're like, I don't want to fly well, nine yeah, miles. And I didn't have problems squashing them until you talked about their beady little eyes looking at you. <laughs> Those and red that, beady eyes, David, they don't creep you out. I, no, I don't get close enough to see they're red, oh, but yeah. I mean, I just don't know. Oh, I, they're red. Yeah. David. yeah, I've been smashing them up until now. You know, who now the stink bugs, they, they don't seem so bad. Yeah, good point. <laughs> no, those are still pretty bad because they smell. Yeah, they smell too. All right. No, but thanks for the education, John. That's good.